is victory. have been standing together over these last few weeks concerning our faith project. And what is our faith project? Rain. Rain. I want to give you a forecast this morning. <laughs> Leviticus 26, 3 and 4, if you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, I will give you Rain. in due season and the land shall yield her increase and the trees of the field yield their fruit. And then we read from 1 Kings 18, Elijah said to his servant, go up now, look toward the sea. He went up and looked and he said, there's nothing. And Elijah said, go seven times. And at the seventh time, the servant said, a cloud as small as a man's hand is arising out of the sea. And Elijah said, go up, say to Ahab, hitch your chariot and go down, lest the rain stop you. In a little while, the heavens were black and the wind swept clouds and there was a great rain. rain. In verse 41, there is the sound of the abundance of rain. So what are we believing for? Rain. What are we receiving? Rain. What are we taking? Rain. Father, we thank you for the rain in Jesus' name. We praise you, Lord, for perfect rains, gentle rains, rains that do no damage, but feed the ground and lighten the earth. We thank you for this, Lord, and we come together as a church and thank you for all who are watching us right now. We are all in agreement for the rain from heaven, and we are in agreement together for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the, the, the former and the latter rain coming together in a great glory storm. In Jesus' name. Give God a shout of praise, everybody. Sing morning by morning. Morning by morning, your faithfulness shines like the sun. Straight for today and bright hope for tomorrow has come. Oh, Father, your wonders are endless. Father, your wonders are endless. Open my eyes to believe. Awake my soul. Let everything that has breath. Let everything that has breath. We have strength for today. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow has come. Oh, Father, your wonders. Oh, Father, your wonders are endless. Open my eyes to believe. Awake my soul. Let everything that has breath praise you. Let everything that has breath praise you.
thanksgiving today with thanksgiving on our lips we enter your courts today all our lives we freely give awaken my soul to praise come on sing that with me with thanksgiving on our lips we enter your courts today all our lives we Awaken my soul to let everything, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord, praise the Lord. With all of my heart, with all of my heart, with all of my strength, with all that I have, I will sing that everything that has
Thank you, Jesus. This morning, we're going to do a new song. And over the last several years, I have turned my, my attention towards the goodness of God. Have you done that too? And that song, that beautiful song came along. All my life, he has been faithful and I will sing of the goodness of God. And I don't know about you, but that was an anthem in our house, still is. But a couple weeks ago, the Lord brought something to my attention. This wasn't in a corrective manner, although that happens often, but this was an addition. He was adding something to me that I hadn't seen before. And I was reading through Hebrews 11, our faith chapter, and I was reading through what Papa calls the hall of faith. And I was reading through these people and I got to Sarah. By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed and she bore a child when she was past the age. So when you say one, it was a desire of her heart, but two, it was a natural impossibility. So there was a contradiction looking at her in the face. But this, this is what the Lord highlighted for me. Because she judged him faithful, who had promised. She knew the promise, she heard the promise, and perhaps maybe she believed a portion of the promise, but it wasn't until she judged him faithful. In chapter 10, verse 23, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful. And he said, Aubrey, you can't separate my goodness from my faithfulness. But when you judge his faithfulness, I will see the goodness of God. Lord, right now we judge you faithful. And regardless of the impossibilities or what may, may seem hard to believe, it's not up to our mind but it's up to our heart and our mouth to say with boldness and with confidence, without wavering, I judge you faithful. Great is your faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see, all that I have need of. You never change. Your compassions they fail not. And I will sing, great is thy faithfulness. Great are you, Lord. I judge you faithful. All my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good with every man, with every of the goodness of God. All my life, all my life, you have been faithful. Oh, you've been so faithful, Lord. All my life, you have been so, so good with every breath, every breath that I am faithful. I want to change this. I will sing of the faithfulness of God. Oh, I will sing of the faithfulness of God. Oh, oh I will sing of the faithfulness of God. I call 
call you faithful for the promises you've kept and every need you met. Lord, I'm so grateful you were with me every step and I never will forget. And I think of how you blessed me, how your hand has never let me go, never let me go. You have been so good to me. Oh, it amazes me how you love me. What a friend you have been. So good to me. Oh, it amazes me how you love me. What a friend you have been.
Lord, we come on behalf of those that don't know your faithfulness and those of us who do, who've tasted the goodness of God. We come to you to cry out on their behalf for your mercy, for your goodness, that in your mercy, Lord, and in your goodness, you would show your faithfulness because we ask you to. We pray for those all across Morocco and all that region, Lord. We pray, Lord, for those who are still trapped. We pray for them. We pray for supernatural rescue. We pray, Lord, for supernatural strength. We pray for supernatural sustaining power of God. We pray for an opening of their eyes to know, Lord, that it is you and none other and that Jesus is the Savior. He's the mediator between God and man. We ask for angelic assistance in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, for those who are injured. We pray for those who are hanging between life and death. And we, Lord, we pray over each and every one of them. Lord, many who have never really had a prayer offered on their behalf, we pray for them. We pray their eyes be open to you, that somehow, Lord, you would enlighten them to know you, Jesus, to know you, Jesus, that in their, in their last breath, that, that Jesus, they look to you and they know it's you. You are the revealer. You do not hide yourself from those who will just ask and seek. We pray, Lord, that in the, this moment, this moment of, of such critical decisions of eternity, they would be quickened and awakened to cry out to you. Thank you, Lord. We pray over those, Lord, who are in such grief and despair and in fear and whose lives remain at risk as the earth continues to shake under their feet. We pray over them, Lord, and we pray that same prayer that in their, their very hearts, there's a quickening in them. This time, the time is short that you quicken in them, Lord, to look to you and your faithfulness, you show them Jesus. We pray for those, Lord, who have been Christians but have had to hide and be, be kept secret but Lord, that in their courage and in their boldness, there's a display of the supernatural move of the Spirit of God. That there are signs and wonders and healing and miracles and an outpouring of your Spirit all across that region. That Lord, by the hundreds of thousands upon thousands upon thousands, people would be quickened and awakened and come to you, Jesus, and know you. And it's spread like wildfire across that nation and across that region. We pray for those, Lord, that you have called to go into that country and into that area and the hillsides and the city and, and, and to Marrakesh and Casablanca and all the areas in there, Lord. Those that you're call, calling.
empowering them, that you equip them with a supernatural, that you make a way for them when there's no way. Angels, we charge you in Jesus' name, do the work of God. Do the work of God. Do the work of this, this work of God in this hour. And I thank you, sir, in this time, in this day, that light versus darkness is being made very clear in every, in every culture, in every mind, in every soul, in every government, in every region, in every place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father, now as we pray over our nation. We pray over the United States of America and over Canada. And this, 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 these two nations, Lord, that you called to work hand in hand on this continent. In the name of Jesus, we pray for these nations. And we declare that Satan will not take these nations. Satan will not have our countries. Satan will not have our government. Satan will not have our, our children. Satan will not have our young people. Satan will not have, darkness will not have our schools. Darkness will not have our military. Darkness will not have us, will not have our people. You will not have our people. But we stand fast, Lord, and we, we know that you are faithful. You are faithful to your covenant. You are faithful to this land established in your covenant as a nation set apart, set aside for the body of Christ as a tool and an instrument all the way up to the coming of the Lord. All the way, all the way, all the way to the coming of the Lord. We are called to restrain him Restrain him. We resist him. We resist it by faith. We resist it in, in every way we, we know and see to resist. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. We thank you, Father, in your faithfulness. Deliver this land out of the hand of every enemy. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. We praise you for what you're doing in Israel. We laugh at the devil. Prophecy triumphs over policy. Prophecy triumphs over every evil policy. Whether it's policy of other nations, policy even within Israel, it doesn't make any difference. Po United States policy, it doesn't matter. Prophecy, your word triumphs over the policies of men. We stand fast that your will be done in spite of the ignorance and the maliciousness and the hatred of men. We give you praise. Now, just put your hand on somebody close by. We are ever mindful, Lord, that we are the body of the anointed one. We are the body of Christ. And in this church, we have been separated unto one another. We pray for one another. We believe for one another. We're mindful of one another. We're thoughtful over one another. We pray for the prosperity, spirit, soul, body, financially, socially, mentally, 
We pray over the future. We pray over the, their relationship with you. We pray over their heart. We pray, Lord, resisting the devil. We pray, Lord, over every burden, every care, every worry, every need. In Jesus' name, we make intercession in the name of Jesus, one for another. We thank you, Father, that each of us, that forgiveness towards one another, but Lord, for whatever, whatever my brother or my sister needs forgiveness from you, we lift it to you. Things they've done they shouldn't, things they haven't done they should. Lord, cleanse us all by your blood. That together we're separated. We're separated for the master's work. We're separated to witness to you and for you. We are separated to be testimonies. We're separated to be living, walking, breathing, talking arcs of the covenant of God. We're separated with the spirit of the living God on the inside of us. We're separated from the world. We don't think like them, act like them. We're not partakers of their, of their ways. We don't live like them. We don't try to be like them. Lord, we, we search and seek you. Greater is he who is in us than anything that's out in the world. Greater is he who is in us than anything the world has to offer. Greater is he who is in us than anything in the world that comes against us. Greater is, the, is he. Greater, 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 greater is he. Greater is he that's in my brother. Greater is he that's in my sister. Greater is he that's in this church. Greater is he. Greater is he. Greater is he. I say greater. Praise Jesus. Oh, we give you praise. Pastor George. Pastor George. In there of one day, they pass the kilo mo contra. In get an ish de hala ho rataba. In geleg his neda monda vata. E era ha hane ne ne ke. Ongalash de era together. We pray over you. Together we stand for you. Together we pray for you. Thank you. Together we believe for you. Together, together. Together, 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 Lord, we are together. We are together. Hallelujah. Thank you. Lord, we, I don't, I've never prayed this prayer before. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray over space. I pray over the outer space. I pray, Lord, over the atmosphere. I pray over the envelope that that the shtiela kahile mata. I pray over those that would try to use space against us. I pray over those that would try to manipulate and operate in and shtiela work from positions of space. In the name of Jesus, no, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. You wicked spirits in heavenly places, we seize you in the name of Jesus. Rendering you helpless in every way. All your, all your, all your operations, all your manipulations, all your, your is there. I bind you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Come to nothing. Come apart. Come apart. Come apart. You come apart. Fly apart. Ningle Rahalegli. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, karamashte ala karaniya tarana makaya namatamana. Fishti aki namahale kisto atana mangala bahara makana namanata. Oh, fear not, fear not, fear not, says the Lord. I'm telling you, do not fear. Do not fear those that seem to be rising up with might and strength. They are flexing their arms of power, flexing what they think to be their missiles, their, their nuclear arsenals, their armaments, their vishtiatas. They rattle their sabers and, 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 and speak with great blustering words. Those words are nothing but blustering winds, says the Lord. Hallelujah. As long as you will remain faithful to me, you give me opportunity to show my faithfulness to you. And they will be nothing, nothing but exhibits. I will make a mockery of their, I will make a mockery of their, 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 their shaking fist. I will make a mockery. I will make a mockery of them. Thank you, Lord. They think that they are mocking God with it. Rather, instead, I am, I am allowing them to be raised up so that I may bring them down. Hallelujah. For this is my covenant, saith the Lord. This is my plan, saith the Lord. Don't be moved. Don't be moved. Take your stand. Hold your stand. Hold your place. Hallelujah. And stand in the face of threat. Stand, stand. Literally, take your stand and speak out. Speak out. Though nobody else may hear you, speak out. Speak out against those weapons of warfare. Speak out against those threats. Speak out against disaster. Speak out against the catastrophe. Speak out against it. Watch me work by my hand, saith the Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Watch me work. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Thank you, give Jesus. glory to God right now. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Pastor, Pastor, I'm impressed, Pastor Gene, for you to pray over George. Yeah, amen. Stretch your hands to Pastor George right now. Come on, when we come into agreement, we all know Matthew 18, 19. There's way more than two, but we're coming to not, just not in agreement with those in this room, but those watching by television, listening by radio, and we're gonna pray over Pastor George right now. Heavenly Father, as a group of saints that are gathered with you, Father, Lord, I thank you that this man is holy. He is set apart. He is set in this place at this time in this season. So, Father, we speak to his body and we say, be whole. We speak to his spirit and say, be renewed. We speak to his flesh and say, you will live long and prosper. Hallelujah. We speak to his spirit that you will come to another place in the Father. Come to another place in your walk. Come to the Father saying in the heavens, come up here. Come up here where I want to be. Come up here. I have things to show you. Come up here. For there is a new place for you. Thank now, Father, as a group of people, as his church, as his flock, we come up behind him and we hold up his arms and we say, Lord, we honor our pastor. We honor our leader and we say, thank you, Father, for what he has done, what he's going to do. And Lord, we give you all the praise for this man and the calling that you placed on him and on his wife, Terry, in Jesus' name. Everybody agree? Say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes the Lord just wants to move. Sometimes he just wants to do things. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Don't want to jump off too quick. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Pray in the spirit a moment. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Saranama. All my life you have been faithful. Oh, say it happy. All 
Somebody's standing there and you're thinking, well, I remember one time he wasn't faithful. But that's not possible. Now, what's possible is that you missed the opportunity. What's possible is that you missed what he was trying to get to you. But when you judge him faithful, not only now, not only in your future, but you judge your past and know that he was faithful. 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 I'm telling you, he was faithful. 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 Oh, yeah. There's a friend of ours many years ago, many years ago, she was in a foreign country that was not friendly to Christian ministries and was having to transport cash from one city to another. And the only way to achieve that would be to hide it on her person. And she was caught with it. And it was a fairly sizable amount of money and it was ministry money, and she was put in jail, and uh, they were able to get word back to their office, immediately began destroying papers and burning evidence and so forth of their ministry work in that country. The, begin, the saints began to pray, and she was released miraculously. Hallelujah. She immediately called her father to tell him she was okay and what all had happened. And he said to her, but was he faithful? You know, she felt pretty abandoned in that moment. And she told me, she said, I knew what he meant. And she said, I began to stop and think because I knew God was faithful, but how did I wind up in that situation? Lost the money, all kinds of things, you know? And all of a sudden, the Lord opened her eyes and she saw where he had told her what to do and she didn't do it. He had told her, he had warned her and she missed the warning. 
He was faithful, but she missed it. And even in her missing it, what happened? He was faithful. He was faithful. Lord, we praise you and we judge you faithful in everything we do. In the name of Jesus. Look at somebody and say, he's faithful and you may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I welcome you this morning. Wel welcome to the goodness of God. Welcome to the faithfulness of God. Welcome to the, pre the presence of God this morning. And welcome to Eagle Mountain International Church. If it's your first time here on the mountain with us, would you raise your hand? We'd like to properly welcome you today. Would you raise your hand? Our first timers, yes, I see your hands all around. Give them a big hand. This is great that they're with us today. We're glad that you're with us. It blesses us, blesses, blesses us very much that you came. I hope you came hungry because we're serving up a good, a good word today. Amen. So if it is your first time, we'd like to invite you to join our staff and some of our pastoral team after service today in the fellowship room, which is just to my right, just for a few moments there where we can give you a gift, shake your hand, answer questions, whatever you might need. We just want to properly welcome you. There's a card in back of the seat in front of you. If you'll fill that card out and bring it with you, it'll give us an opportunity to have your name. You can write any prayer request you have on there, uh, but we'll pray over you whether you put a request on there or not. It's nice to have your name, and we will call your name before the Lord. And when we do, we, we pray in faith. We pray confidently in faith on the Word of God for the, His will, His, His faithfulness, and a demonstration of His blessing in your life. And so we invite you to do that. It's, it's a pleasure and a blessing to have you here today. We also want to welcome everyone who's watching this morning from the top of the world, the bottom, all the way around the middle. If you're watching today on Victory Channel, however you are hooked in, we are glad that you're here. Would you welcome them as they join us? Just think of it, thousands of people, thousands of people right now and then even later on thousands of people will be watching all throughout the week we literally have tens of thousands of people watching that come to watch this service and to drink from the the, the well of salvation and the the waters of the spirit from this place we're so thankful for you there's a number on your screen 877-281-6297 and you may call that number anytime today and during the service if you need prayer you have a question we can be of help. Maybe you'd like to have the Believer's Voice of Victory magazine. There's no charge for that. And in, 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 during your offering time or, or information on KCBC or however we can help you, there'll be someone on the end of that line that will be able to be of assistance. Praise the Lord. Well, I have something I want to read to you really quickly to, that goes with this announcement. It's another testimony to God's faithfulness. This um, says... My wife and I have been taking real life marriage class. We're so thankful the Holy Spirit led us to pick this class. There's so many that we thought about going to. We are learning so much already in just two weeks. We're excited to dive deeper and grow in our marriage. We were high school sweethearts and have been married for 19 years. God told us both at the first Miracles on the Mountain that we would be moving to the revival capital of the world. We didn't think it would take us six and a half years, but we continued to pursue him, keep the vision before us. We never would have imagined it would be our daughter going, choosing to go to KCBC that would finally get us here. Praise the Lord. We are in our promised land. We're so excited to be here and a part of this great church and ministry. We really are enjoying the teaching, the group interaction, as well as group exercise that we did last Wednesday. This class is a blessing, and we are thankful to be a part of it. So I thank the Lord for that. We get a number of testimonies that come in that way, but that's just an example of what happens when we get together in smaller groups, fellowship together around the Word. Now, we have the real life classes that happen on Wednesday nights, but apart from that, we also have small, small groups, some are prayer groups, discipleship groups, groups of all kinds. And so we, some, some groups are year round, they don't stop, they don't have a start and an end date, but you can jump in anytime. 
Other groups are for a season, for a session with a certain curriculum. So we want to let you know that next Sunday and the next afterwards, the 17th and the 24th, directly following service, we will have our group spare. That means we're going to have somebody from each one of those groups. The group leaders will be there. It'll be after service. They'll have booths and all kinds of of uh, information where you can meet people, meet group leaders, and find where you need to plug in. It's great to be a part on Sunday morning, but it's not the same as being a part of smaller groups to get to know one another. The Bible says, know those that labor among you, whether you're serving together, worshiping together, learning the word together, and being involved really in more than one to be able to connect as part of the body this way. It's the design of God. And so all of that will be out in the foyer next two Sundays. We already have 217 signed up for this current round of discipleship groups. But listen to this, our online groups, we have almost 800 signed up for their online groups. We haven't even started those yet. We have four countries represented in our e-groups. So there's something for everybody. So there'll be over 200 groups for you to look at next week and, and be able to ask questions and sign up. For more information, you can go to emic.org slash groups, emic.org slash groups, or you can find out more next Sunday. But you can go ahead and sign up and be getting ready and get the information by going to that emic.org slash groups. Praise the Lord. We have another announcement that Pastor and I wanted to make together want to do this one. It's a very special, exciting announcement. Praise the Lord. But it's, it's, it's sweet, but a little <laughs> sad. Mylon Lefevre is in heaven. Oh, no, no. Oh. <laughs> And he is rejoicing with Jesus, the one that he's so looked forward to seeing for so long. He's rejoicing with his family. He's rejoicing with your family. He's Glory telling them all about you right now. <laughs> Glory to God. And how, that's, that's, how precious, how precious it is in the sight of the Lord. That's right. The saints that cross over. And so we've been talking with Christy, ministering to her. And I was thinking about how the last sermon that Mylon preached was right here. And so blessed by that. Hallelujah. I will, we will miss him dearly. I already dearly. do. I already and do. Um, we wanted to let you know that there will be in a couple of weeks a public memorial for Mylon right here at EMIC. And we know that it's going to be a great, great tribute to him. And I just wanted us to pray over Christy right now. And their family. And their family as well, who is with them. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. we pray over Christy, over Mylon's daughter, Sonny, over Peter, Alan, his wife. We thank you, Lord, for you, Jesus. what you're doing in her right now. The same comfort that the Holy Spirit comforts us with, he is comforting them with right now. And in these days to come, I thank you, Lord, for visitation of the Holy Spirit. I thank you for Jesus himself ministering directly to them, to Christy. And that, Lord, we as their congregation, as their brothers and sisters in the Lord, we support them, we lift them up, and we thank you for the bright future that Christy has here on this earth until the day that Jesus comes. We honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Amen. Some of you may not know, but in the earlier part of Mylon's ministry, he was quite the evangelist with his music. Over 250,000 young people came to the Lord under his ministry amen. at that time. And then amen. countless thousands since then, their lives have been impacted and changed because of his ministry and teaching the word. So we're thankful that God sent yeah. him to be a part of this congregation. That's right. And he, he has had some depth of theology mm. that just surpasses. He has helped us so much. Such as, um, well, he said one time, I have reverse paranoia. paranoia. Everybody's out to bless me. 
Mylan. So That's we're, Mylan. we're looking forward to being able to celebrate yeah. Mylan's life. A lot of things happening here on the mountain. Watch your screens. <laughs> Radiant ladies, join us as we continue in the garden with our monthly meeting on Thursday, September 14th at 7 p.m. in the chapel. Doors will open at 6.30 p.m. with refreshments. Bring a friend as we enjoy a time of worship, the word, and ministry. Free childcare will be provided for ages birth through fifth grade. Register today at emic.org slash events. Attention all men. Come join us for our next men's breakfast on Saturday, September 16th at 8 a.m. in the headquarters dining room. As we begin to journey through the cave of Adalam and discover the principles taught by David that changed weak and bankrupt men into the most faith-filled and fearless special forces of all time. Come hungry for a hot breakfast, a powerful message, and fellowship in the Word of God. Registration is required, so register now at emic.org slash events. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner, and on September 17th, I'm going to be ministering at Eagle Mountain International Church, and I'm so excited about the word that I'm going to be bringing you. I'm already praying over it because I believe you're really going to get something brand new from the word of God. So please make your plans to be with me at Eagle Mountain International Church on September the 17th, and Denise and I are looking forward to seeing you there. EMIC family, we are thrilled to be praying over Victory Thong again this year. Join us for our Come and Go prayer times right here in the sanctuary from Sunday, September 17th through Thursday, September 21st. These prayer times will take place on Sunday from 7 to 11 p.m. and Monday through Thursday from 6 to 11 p.m. As Pastor Terry says, we're not moving to the end of an event, but to the door it will open. Together, we will open wide, effectual doors to perpetuate the word of faith on every available voice. For more information, go to emic.org slash prayer ministry. EMIC family, there is always so much happening here at the Revival Capital of the World. And next Sunday is no exception with our EMIC Groups Fair. Both next Sunday and the following Sunday, our Groups Fair will be directly in front of the church following the service. We encourage you to stop by, grab a free burger, and see over 200 groups represented. Stay, ask your questions, and sign up. And always remember, whenever you wish to find a group, go to emic.org slash groups. The next stop for the 2023 Flashpoint Live Truth and Freedom Tour is September 14th at the Mid-America Center in Council Bluffs, Iowa. Then, on October 5th and 6th, we'll be at Living Word Christian Center in Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. And finally, November 30th through December 1st, we'll be at Harvest Rock Church in Pasadena, California. For more information, visit us online at govictory.com slash FPLive. Register today. Come on, somebody. Is anybody in the church today? Yeah, if you're not doing anything next week, we'd love to see you. If you are doing something, you need to come to Omaha. Uh, be back here for church. Uh, but come see us. Join us in Omaha next week uh, as we Thursday night have a special one-night event. And my good friend Jesse Duplantis is going to be there. And... Uh, Wild man Mike Lindell and a few others are going to be there. Uh, it's going to be a great time. You never know when you get Jesse Duplantis and Mike Lindell together. <laughs> Just Y'all pray for me. <laughs> All right, so listen, did you know it rained Friday night at my house? How about y'all? So Terry and I were in, in the media room watching something highly edifying and spiritual. No, it wasn't. But anyway, <laughs> we were watching television, nothing I got to repent about. And um, uh, she goes, hey, come, come here, we got to the door. So we walked out the door. And you know, you ever notice when it hasn't rained a while, what the first thing you do? You open the door and you go, <laughs> why do we do that? It's not like you can see the drops coming down. You see the drops here, Right. That is an open heaven. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit this morning about an open heaven. Because open heavens, you, you are attending. And you, those of you that are members and those of you that are watching, you're watching Eagle Mountain International Church, also known as the church under the open heaven. Oh, come on, y'all. Wake up. There you are. 
Just imagine you're at a flashpoint event where everybody yells and screams, okay? <laughs> All right, I want to read some scripture. Isaiah 64, verse 1, the King James says, Oh, that thou would rend the heavens, come down, and the mountains might flow down at thy presence. Don't we all want that? Don't we all want to see God come down? The reality is the open heaven, the veil has already been torn. I'm not going to do a big Bible study, but the veil's already been torn. We already have access to an open heaven. You go, well, what is an open heaven? When you get to the reality of understanding how important an open heaven is, you get to live in it. Now, when it's raining, you can be in an open heaven and get wet. Or you can grab something natural and put in an um umbrella. Think about that for a minute. We can live, we can choose to walk in the supernatural of an open heaven or we can stay under an umbrella. The thing is, I don't have your umbrella, you have your umbrella. My question to you is, what are you going to do? Are you going to get wet? Or are you going to live under an open heaven? Or are you going to live with an umbrella. That was free. Thank you for your rousing applause. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go real quickly over some scripture about open heavens. Luke 3, verses 21 through 22. Uh, talks about, now when all the people were baptized, it came to pass Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heaven was opened. And the Holy Ghost, you can't say Holy Ghost, you have to say, and the Holy Ghost <laughs> descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him and a voice came up from heaven which said, thou art my beloved son and thee am I well pleased. At the point I want you to get, the, the heavens opened, the dove came down in a physical form, Holy Ghost sat on his shoulder, it never says he left. How would you walk if you had a dove sitting on your shoulder? <laughs> you would be very careful about what you did and where you went. That's an open heaven, y'all. I'm telling you. Matthew 6, 10 in the King James says this, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's a prayer. We're supposed to be praying for an open heaven. We're supposed to be living under an open heaven. Revelation 4, verses 1 through 2. Now, this is it. This is it. This is actually, I was praying this over Pastor George. After this, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking to me, which said, Come up hither, and I'll show you things which must be hereafter. What if Jesus was standing to you, and he said, Hey, come here, I've got something I want to show you. Come here, I, want, I, got, I got something I got to show you. You would go, oh, okay, yeah, where, where do you want me to go? You see, the open heaven is there for you and for me. All we've got to do is do it. You say, well, what do I got to do to do it is receive it, acknowledge it, start looking up. My dad used to always have these corny sayings, you know, and we'd hang up the phone and he goes, well, just remember this, keep looking up, you'll see more. <laughs> Great dad. But he was right. When we have our conscious earthly mind set on heavenly things above, especially an open heaven, we're going to see more, we're going to live more, we're going to do more. So write this down. An open heaven gives us a unique vantage point from which to see. If we're living in an open heaven like Milan is today, he's in heaven looking down going, oh yeah. You know, I think the, the number one thing's going to happen when we get to heaven, the first word you're going to say, probably after you see everybody, you know, you're going to go, oh, <laughs> oh, yeah, I get it. Oh, okay. You have a different vantage point. You have a different place to see from. Malachi 3.10, here it is. You knew it was coming. In the New Living uh, Version, bring all the tithes in the storehouse so that there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of heaven's armies, I will open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. Now we quote that scripture often, but how often do we actually look like, okay, like Mylon said, I have reverse paranoia. Everybody's out to bless me. And we think, oh, that's Milan. He's so cute, you know. 
I, I'm telling you, if we can get the revelation of living under an open heaven, things will change. I know Brother Copen's been, been in Bogota, and I was getting texts from David Ellis uh, this weekend telling me how great the meetings have been and signs and wonders, and he's flowing, he's strong, and doing a, did a great, had some great meetings down there. I'm sure you'll see him on the network. But I'm telling you, there's something about being under an open heaven that changes your purview. It changes your vantage point. So why, how do we fit Malachi 3.10 into this open heaven? And this is the part you must understand today. Tithes and offerings are the starting point of good stewardship. That's how you access. That's how you access. I skipped one. An open heaven gives us a greater and clearer perception of the ultimate reality. You see, we have to be, I know there's been this phrase in church and ministry my whole life about whether it's so heavenly minded, they're no earthly good. That was wrong. I know what you mean by that. The truth is if I'm truly heavenly minded, I am very well efficient and heavenly minded on earth. So if tithes and offerings are the starting point, because that's what it tells us, if you'll give, it's going to open. Look at Luke 16, 11. Faithfulness is what it's all about. I love that Aubrey was singing that. And if you are untrustworthy about worldly wealth, who will trust you with the true riches of heaven? Amen. We've been given directions. We've been given scripture. And this morning, if I want to leave you with one thing about an open heaven is this, this statement. All increase. All. Say All. all. All increase in the kingdom comes through faithful stewardship of what has already been given. The fact you're standing here with clothes, thank you for that. You've been given either the money to buy that or someone bought that for you. So we must live and move and breathe with the constant revelation of an open heaven and what that means. Brother Copeland's book on covenant and what, what Pastor George has been talking about, living inside the vision and the vision God gives you, if you don't have a constant understanding of what is coming down, there has to be an open. So close up your umbrella and get wet. Amen? Amen. All right, thank you. I have tapes and CDs in the back. <laughs> I'm kidding. All right, if you'd like to give this morning, and I know everyone says yes. yes. All right, amen. Envelopes are in the back of the chair in front of you. Those of you on the front row <clears throat> that want uh, an offering, want an envelope, John Jester will raise his hand. I'm sorry, anybody will raise their hand on the front row. And an usher will bring it to you. If you want to make your checks payable, this may be the church under the open heaven, but make it payable to EMIC or Eagle Mountain International Church because the bank doesn't recognize the other name. Um, you can also text to give 36609 the dollar amount and keyword EMIC. You can call, you can go online, uh, emic.org slash give. And if you want to call 877-281-6297 and by mail, EMIC, Fort Worth, Texas 76192. Your gifts should be leading the way. Your gifts are leading the way. I learned something yesterday. I was watching um, some uh, a documentary and stuff about climate change. Don't worry, I'm not going to take over. <laughs> but climate change, the common misconception about climate change is the CO2 in the atmosphere and all of our exhaust. And the CO2 goes up and it causes the temperature to raise. It's totally false. It's a lie. The temperature goes up and the CO2 follows. But it takes 800 years for the CO2 levels to follow the temperature. So my question is, when you give in the offering and when you give to what God tells you to give to, it's going to take a while for that, for that CO2 to follow up, for that cash, that, that return to come. Now, it's not going to take 800 years because I don't think you're going to live that long. I could be wrong. But you see, we have to get our perspective right. We've been believing this common lie about climate change, saying it's one way when the truth is actually something else. The world always has a way of defeating what the gospel is preaching or attempting to defeat it, or thwarting, or, or uh, distorting. That's the word I was looking for. 
Just like temperature comes before CO2, so does giving come before harvest. All you got to do is ask a farmer, he'll tell you. He can't go out there and go, what? There's nothing here. Well, did you plant your seed? No, here you go, I'll put it in. No, there's a, there's a rhyme, there's a reason. Remember, your tithes, your offerings point, are the starting point of your abundance. Amen, thank you. All, uh, uh, what's your names? Ushers, that's their names. <laughs> Ushers, you may receive the offering. Father, we thank you for the rain, the natural rain. We thank you for the rain of the Holy Spirit. And we just bask in your presence and give you honor and glory and thanksgiving for all that you're doing in the body of Christ and around the world. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Greet somebody, and then you can go ahead and be seated. Open your Bibles this morning, if you would please, to 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5, <clears throat> you know there are dates in the past that we remember and recognize for, for many of us, especially those who've studied history. December the 7th, 1941, the attack on Pearl Harbor. November 22nd, 1963, President John, John F. Kennedy was shot and September 11th, 2001, a major attack on the United States of America. And those of us who are <clears throat> old enough to remember that day, you remember where you were. You remember exactly what you were doing. Pastor Terry and I were leaving Moscow with a group from the church. 
uh, we had about 13 people with us. We had just been there for an end time conference at Rick Renner's church with Billy Brim. And evidently we stirred up some trouble <clears throat> while we were there. And as we were flying home, <clears throat> I was watching the map um, on the plane of where we were traveling. We got over England and then all of a sudden we turned around and I thought, well, that's very interesting. And they took us back to Ireland and we were in Ireland for the rest of the week and endeavoring to, to find out and know when we were going to be able to come home. And fi finally on that Friday of that week, we were able to make it back home and how, how thrilling it was when we arrived. Actually first, I believe it was Atlanta. And when we got off the plane, we were getting ready to make the connection to our next flight home. There were uh, stewardesses, there were flight attendants, there were pilots that are standing there with flags in a, in a line as we walked through this line. And it lifted our hearts and it lifted our spirits because we all realize the impact that it made on our nation, the impact that it made on our lives, but also the impact that it made on us spiritually and a resolve that came up from within us that we, we are people of the authority of God. We are people that have dominion. Amen. And there was something that day that woke up a sleeping giant. And I believe that that giant has not gone back to sleep again. But we are reminded of who we are in Christ Jesus. And reminded of the blood of Jesus that covers us. And the fact that we have a covenant of protection. We have a covenant of protection. And I want to talk to you a little bit about that this morning. 1 John 5.18, it says, We know that whosoever is born of God sins not, but he that is begotten of God keeps himself, and that wicked one touches him not. I want this drilled into you this morning. I want you to see this. I want you to comprehend this, not only for yourself, <clears throat> but also for your children. That we do not walk in fear. No fear here. No fear in this house. No fear in your house. Your house, those of you that are watching, especially where our children are concerned. But all of us. Why? Because we have a covenant of protection with Almighty God. In the early 1960s, actually it began in 1959, there was a television show that came on, and I remember <clears throat> as, a, as a child, about seven or eight years old, I would watch this program. And it was, prog it was a program called The Untouchables. <laughs> Some of you remember the movie that came out later on. Kevin Costner, Sean Connery were in that movie. But I, I remember the original black and white television program that came on called The Untouchables. Say the untouchables. the untouchables. Even saying the word has an impact to it. But the show was about real life 1930s U.S. Treasury agents. And the picture that you see behind me is the cast of the untouchables. What a tough crew, especially the guy with the ax. <clears throat> and the guy that whatever that is that he's holding. <laughs> <clears throat> Crowbar, yes, thank you. <clears throat> These are the untouchables. And they were led by Elliot Ness, played by Robert Stack at the time, and took down the bootleg empires of Scarface Al Capone, as well as many other gangsters. They were named the untouchables. I believe it says it up there. These are the untouchables. You know where I'm going with this. <clears throat> Why were they named the untouchables? Because of their courage, their integrity, and the fact Elliot Ness was a real person who did this thing that they acted out in that television series. But they had courage, integrity, and the fact that they could not be intimidated or bribed by the boss or the mob, mob bosses. There was no fear there. That is a picture in the spirit of us. These are 
the untouchables. Give God praise right now. <clears throat> we should have a group picture of all of us taken together. <clears throat> bring your crowbars, your axes, or whatever else. <clears throat> but mostly bring your Bible <clears throat> because we are the untouchables. Let me read to you what Proverbs 19.23 says in the NIV translation. The fear of the Lord leads to life. Then one rests content, untouched by trouble. The New Living Translation says, the fear of the Lord leads to life, bringing security and protection from harm. And then in the Amplified, it says, the reverent, worshipful fear of the Lord leads to life, and he who has it rests satisfied. He cannot be visited with actual evil. Say, I believe that. I, believe <clears throat> I receive that. Jesus was an untouchable. He was untouchable when he walked the earth. He had an assignment to fulfill. He honored his father. He stayed protected. No one could do anything to him unless he gave them permission. Well, he hung on the cross. He gave them permission. He was beaten. They gave him permission. He went to hell. Permission. He offered himself as a living sacrifice unto God. But the rest of the time, the rest of the time, he was untouchable because the devil was trying to kill him. And you need to get this down into your spirit. You are untouchable. Amen. We are untouchable. But where Jesus was concerned, <clears throat> let me read this scripture to you for sake of time. Luke chapter 4 Verses 28 and 30 in the new NIV translation. All the people in the synagogue were furious when they heard this. Well, I won't go back and tell you everything that he was saying, but it really, really made them mad at him. It says they got up, drove him out of town, took him to the brow of the hill on which the town was built in order to throw him down the cliff. But he walked right through the crowd and went on his way. What was he? <clears throat> they couldn't touch him. <clears throat> couldn't touch him. Another account, John chapter 8, verses 58 and 59, <clears throat> Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Ooh, they didn't like that. They didn't like that. Then they took up stones to throw at him. But Jesus hid himself. Now, when it said it hid himself, he hid himself. He wasn't like, camera, follow me, I'm going down. Ready? Go. <laughs> uh-uh. He literally hid himself. And he went out of the temple. They had stones to throw at him. And he just walked. And somehow, some way, he disappeared. He vanished. They weren't going to touch him. The fact that he had dominion over that anyway, why? Because he had a job to do. His father had, some, had something for him to fulfill. So he hid himself, went out the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. He was untouchable. Well, think about this. I'll read Colossians 3.3. 3. For you died, and your life is hidden. hidden. Hidden with Christ in God. What does that word hidden mean in the Greek? To conceal by covering. We are covered. Covered by what? The blood. The blood. Say it. Covered by the blood, and it also means to keep secret. Untouchable. In verse 3 of the message translation, it says, Your old life is dead. Your new life, which is your real life, even though invisible to spectators, is with Christ in God. He is your life. I like that phrase there. Invisible to spectators. <clears throat> invisible, invisible to the enemy. 
Jesus was hidden and protected in plain sight. And so are we. So are we. Turn to Isaiah chapter 54. Isaiah chapter 54, and we're going to begin <clears throat> with verse 13. This is the scripture talking about the fact that no weapon formed against you will prosper. Why is that? Because we are the untouchables. He cannot touch us. It says in verse 13, this is the New King James I'm reading from, all your children shall be taught by the Lord and great shall be the peace of your children. The Amplified Bible talks about the undisturbed composure of your children. In righteousness you shall be established. You shall be far from opp oppression. Say, I am far from oppression. <clears throat> For you shall not fear. I refuse to fear. I refuse to fear. And from terror, for it shall not come near you. That's a powerful verse right there. You shall be far from oppression. I am far from oppression. I shall not fear. And I'm far from terror. It shall not come near me. Indeed, they shall surely assemble but not because of me. Whoever assembles against you shall fall for your sake. Behold, I've created the blacksmith who blows the coals in the fire, who brings forth an instrument for his work, and I've created the spoiler that destroys so that no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn." First of all, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. The fear of being shot or being around that or your children in school, that's over. That's over. We are covered by the blood. No weapon of any kind, of any fashion that the devil has that is formed against you it will not prosper. It will not succeed. Not in your life, not in my life. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment, every demonic word that tries to come against you, it says, you shall condemn it. We cast down every high thought that tries to exalt itself against us. We cast it down. We line up with what God says about us, who we are in Christ Jesus, what we can do in Christ Jesus, what we have in Christ Jesus. So no weapon formed against you, no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, you are not subject to the collateral damage of the world. Why? because we are the untouchables. The devil cannot touch us. You condemn that voice that rises against you. And then it says this, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness, their right standing is from me, says the Lord. We are, if you will, living in the land of Goshen. Egypt is right over there. But we saw that what took place for the children of Israel. There was darkness in the land of Egypt and there was light in the land of Goshen. And as a believer and as a church, we stand strong against every evil attack of the enemy we do not have targets attached to us just being, just waiting to be randomly picked off by some terrorist or some insane shooter. No, we have a covenant of protection. It says in Psalm 27, 5 and 6, for, the time, for in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion 
in the secret of his tabernacle, he shall hide me, he shall set me up upon a rock. He hides us in the pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle. Say this after me, we are, we are the, untouchables. the untouchables. You know, in the dangerous times that we're living in, it's important for you and I to know that we are protected by the blood of the Lamb. Right. That when we drive by our schools, we plead the blood of Jesus over that school. And it doesn't matter what people are believing or what's going on. It, what matters is, is the church is rising up, taking her place. And there are some of us who are believing God and believing strong for one another. We are the untouchables. And these are dangerous times. These are the end times. But I want to read something to you that Brother Copeland wrote in a partner letter in May of 2011. He said, we are witnesses to the things no other generation has seen before. Past generations have seen terrible things like disasters and famines of gigantic proportions. The difference is we are seeing and experiencing them one right after the other all over the earth. And then he said this, we need to get into the zone. We need to get into the zone, which is the secret place of the Most High in Psalm 91. Turn to Psalm 91. <clears throat> and as you're turning there, I want to read this to you. This is from Gloria Copeland's book called Build Yourself an Ark. Build Yourself an Ark. She said this, Noah knew there was a flood coming. People made fun of him all those years. Crazy old Noah talks about God delivering him from the flood that's coming. He doesn't know what he's talking about. They didn't know or understand until the flood came and swept them away. They were in the dark. But when the flood came, Noah wasn't in the dark. He was in the ark. Gloria writes, today I'm saying to you the same thing God said to Noah. There's a flood coming. Build yourself an ark. She asked the question, how do we build ourselves an ark? She answered it. Begin with the 91st Psalm. Build it with scriptures about your deliverance. Build it by abiding in the Almighty. Build it by saying with your mouth, He is my refuge and my fortress. He is my God. In Him will I trust, and on Him I lean and rely. Don't wait until the flood comes and sweeps you away. Start now. Meditate on God's word of deliverance. Read it. Go over it every day until it is so deeply rooted in your heart that it comes flowing out at the first sign of trouble. Build yourself an ark today. Don't be in the dark, she says. Build an ark. <clears throat> I can remember the times that Terry and I have faced danger, one in particular when we were in Guatemala many years ago. Aubrey was just a baby at the time. She was home, we were there. <clears throat> and we were headed to a, a meeting that, that we were conducting that was going to be conducted by the ministry that was hosting us down there. And long story short, we were stopped by communist guerrillas. They made us get out of the car. And all of a sudden, from, the, from behind us came a truck full of Guatemalan military workers. Gunfire broke out. The leader that we were with says, hit the dirt. And we jumped onto the ground. I looked up and Terry's standing there looking around. <clears throat> I think I took her by the hair and I pulled her back down to the ground. <clears throat> and all of this that's going on, I looked, I looked up at one point and we could feel the dirt from the bullets hitting around us. And at one point I looked up and I saw somebody with a grenade launcher that was walking towards the military. And I thought to myself, I'm laying there on the ground, and I thought to myself, I wonder what it's like to be shot. <laughs> I threw that thought to the ground. <clears throat> because Aubrey's little face 
that little face came before me. And she literally did. She's just a baby. This little red fuzz on her hair. <laughs> and her face came towards me and, and this came to me. She cannot grow up, grow up without her daddy. And then all of a sudden, I heard somebody praying in tongues, shouting in tongues. So I joined in. Terry did the same thing. Terry heard somebody shouting in tongues. Well, it was her. <clears throat> and I started shouting in tongues. And the others started shouting in tongues. And the battle was going on. It took about seven minutes. And all of a sudden, the communist guerrillas, they took off and they ran up into the jungle. This was a desolate area. This was out in the jungle. They ran up into the jungle. The military, Guatemalan military, got in their truck and they, they flew by us. And it was quiet. Not a sound. Everybody was gone. And we got back into our vehicles. There were three vehicles there. We brought camera equipment with us, so forth, had, had these three vehicles. Got back in the car and started driving towards our destination. <clears throat> I remember that day how much the 91st Psalm meant to me. We arrived at our destination. And as we were driving there, I opened my Bible and I looked at the 91st Psalm, thinking to myself, this Psalm has become real to me. On March the 10th of 1987, sometimes when I read the 91st Psalm, I think about that day and how the Lord delivered us. And you think about every day and the things that you've averted, the things that have not taken place, the things that could have happened. Have you ever driven by an accident that just took place? Yes. Terry and I were driving somewhere just a few weeks ago, came up to the light. Our light was green, but I was going very slow. And there was, there was a car just coming at great neck speed, right right past us and turning right in front of us and the police were right behind them. It was a chase. The Lord protects us. The Lord watches over us. We have the word of God. We have the angels of God. We have the blood of Jesus. We have the name of Jesus. All four of those protective walls are in the 91st Psalm. All four of them. I call it the four walls of protection. They're there. And what the Lord led me to do today is for us on this day of remembrance of September 11th that we rise and stand together. We take our Bibles with us. And he led me to just have us read through the 91st Psalm. Declare it over ourselves. Declaring it over our families. Declaring it over our children. Declaring it over our future. This psalm is the psalm that talks about being untouchable. The devil not being able to touch you. And as we read it today, we'll read, take a little break, maybe praise the Lord a bit. Let it settle down in. But make this alive to you today. Make it alive on the inside to you today. Are you ready? <clears throat> Starting with verse 1. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. He is our refuge. He is our fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers. 
and under his wings you shall take refuge. Father, we thank you. <clears throat> Hold on. <clears throat> Hold on. <clears throat> He'll cover you. You're covered. You're covered. Our children are covered. Under his wings we take refuge. It says he'll deliver us from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence, every disease, COVID. We're delivered right now. <clears throat> that ugly devil's trying to raise its head again. Not around here. Not around this house of faith. Uh-uh. Say, we are delivered. From COVID. The curse of the law. We take our authority over it. In Jesus' name. Yes, sir. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Now, truth, it says thy word is true. There's the word right there. That's our protector. Right there, the word. His truth, say it, shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. We're delivered from all of that. Amen. Cannot touch us. Hallelujah. Cannot touch us. Cannot touch you. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. That's the blood. That's the blood. Because, because in the book of Exodus, let me read it to you, Exodus 12, 13. <clears throat> and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you and I will smite the land of Egypt. Well, it says, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. The blood of Jesus is over us. <clears throat> Whenever we take communion, we are, we are painting the doorpost of the temple, this house, that we're covered by the blood and the devil passes over. All right, you ready? For he shall give his angels. There, hold on, that's the, that's the, that's the third wall. The th third of four walls, four walls of protection. That's all around you. It's a fortress. The name of the Lord is a high tower and the righteous run up into it. The four walls of protection. The first wall that we read about was the word, truth. The second word was the blood, the plague being delivered. The third, the third wall are the angels. Ready? Let's read. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample under foot. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We trample this underfoot. <clears throat> Angels, the third wall of protection. Ready? Because he has set his love upon me, Therefore will I deliver him. I will send him on high because he has known my name. There it is. The fourth wall of protection. 
is the name of Jesus. I was thinking about that name. And I was thinking about the fact that in Philippians 2, 9 and 11 through 11, therefore God has highly exalted him and given him the name, the name, the name, which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven, of those on earth, on those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. So it says, I will set him on high because he has known my name. <clears throat> Read, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Now say this out loud. We are the untouchables. Say it. We are the untouchables. Give God praise and glory and honor and thanksgiving. Pastor Terry, come on up. Musicians, if you would come, please. Let's just lift our hands and give God glory right now. Father, we thank you that we are delivered. We thank you that we walk in the 91st Psalm. We thank you, Lord God, that we, we have dominion and authority over every evil thing. No evil or calamity will come nigh our household, will come nigh our children. Our children are protected by the blood of the Lamb. We charge the angels to surround them. And we refuse to, to fear. fear. Yes, right. Give him glory Thank and praise. Praise God. That book that Pastor was talking about, Sister Copeland's book on Build Yourself an Ark has been changed. There's the name of it. Um, Prosperity we, Promise. There it is. We promise of protection. This little guy right here. We have some in the bookstore. If we run out, you can uh, order it online. But I, I, I wanted that, that phrase, that, the other title, build yourself an ark. Yes. You have to build an ark. Yes. yes. God's given us everything in this. He's given us the name, the word, the blood, the angels, the promises. We could go on. But you have to build that around you. How does he do it? And that, he says that. I will say of the Lord... He is my refuge. He is my fortress. He is my God. And Him I will trust. And then it goes on to say, therefore. So it's because we say of Him and understand. So be feeding, our, feeding our spirits on faith and the importance of just speaking words of faith, the importance of our words of faith and not letting other words come out of our mouth. Why, why build yourself an ark and then tear it down? Build yourself an ark. I will say of the Lord, he's my refuge. I like it from the Amplified Version. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall remain stable and fixed under the shadow right. of the Almighty, whose power no foe can withstand. I will say of the Lord, he's my refuge. He's my fortress. He's my God. And in him, I will trust. And say these things over yourself. And, and it's not... It's not enough to hear a sermon. This is the equipping. This is the tools. This is our corporate faith that we're working together. But continue to build that ark. Be led of the Holy Spirit. Build that around your children, around one another, around our community, around our city, around our state, around our borders. Bless the Lord. He's faithful. Praise God. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus today, I pray over everyone here and those that are watching, and I thank you. You've given us angels. So we charge our angels right now. You protect us. You protect our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren. We plead the blood of Jesus over them right now. And we don't do it in fear. We do it in faith. Believing you. Trusting you. With long life will you satisfy them and show them your salvation. Father, we thank you for the name which is above every name. That name which, which supersedes every demon, every terrorist, every co corrupt thing, evil thing in this earth. The name of Jesus is in us and we use it. We use it. And Father, we thank you for the, the blood, the angels, 
the word, the name. Those walls of protection are up around us. And Lord, I thank you. <clears throat> you just showed me this, that as Noah was building that ark, every board, every plank was a scripture, mm -hmm. a promise, a part of the covenant that caused them to be lifted up in a time when everything was flooded around them. Lord, you are causing us to be lifted up in these times, lifted up financially, lifted up physically, lifted up spiritually, lifted up and over in every way. Father, we thank you that even to the degree where we call for the rain, we have dominion over the skies. Pour it out in Jesus' name. We take our dominion and our authority. We are walking in the blessing. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the, replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over it. Put your hand over your heart right now. Say this after me. I take dominion. I take dominion. Over my body. Over my body. 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 I speak to you now. I speak to you now. You are healed. You are healed. You are delivered. You are delivered. You are made whole. You are made whole. I have dominion. I have dominion. Over this earth. Over this earth. I receive. I receive. The fullness. The fullness. Of what belongs to me. Of what belongs to in me. In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. I am delivered. I am delivered. Redeemed from destruction. Walking in the presence of God. Walking in the presence of God. Everywhere I go. Everywhere I go. I am. I am. A walking, talking. A walking, talking. Ark of the covenant. Ark of the covenant. Anything evil. Anything evil. That tries to touch me. It tries to touch me. It dies. It dies. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, thank God for that right Hallelujah. now. Hallelujah. 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 Now, if there's anyone in this room or watching online or on the network in any way, you make this declaration of faith. It's as simple as that in Psalm 91. You don't know Jesus as Savior. You say, well, I, I know about him. Knowing about him is different than it. the Bible says that we believe in our heart and with our confession, we connect with our salvation. So we declare this, the Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus is my refuge. Is my refuge. He's my fortress. He's my fortress. He's my God. He's my God. In him. In him. In you, Jesus. In you, Jesus. I trust. I trust. I give you my life. I give me my life. I follow you. I follow you. Be my savior. Be my savior. Be my Lord. Be my Lord. Be my healer. Be my healer. Be my provider. Be my provider. Be my baptizer in the Holy Spirit. Be my baptizer in the Holy Fill Spirit. Fill me to overflowing. Fill me to overflowing. And I will. And I will. As you promised. As you promised. Speak with other tongues. Speak with other tongues. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now by faith begin to speak with oh, other Rabbi tongues. How do you do that, Pastor Terry? By faith? So if our altar ministers would come, and as you made that declaration of faith, and you say, well, I, I just want somebody to, to, to confirm. I want to, you come testify to that. If you want to know more about that, if you, you need prayer in any area of your life, they'll help you with the word of God and help you connect to what God has promised you so you can walk out of here with more, with more planks connected in your ark today. Hallelujah. Well, as we go, remember this. God, God loves, loves you. you. We, we love, love you, you, and Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord. God bless you. You are dismissed. Before you go, I'm Greg Stevens. I want to say thank you so much for being part of Eagle Mountain International Church today. Several things I want to keep you informed about before we head into this week. First of all, your promise of protection is a free download, what they were just talking about earlier, emic.org slash no fear, emic.org slash no fear. It's a free download. Listen, it's free. Get it and uh, understand your promise of protection. 
EMIC Group Fair is coming up. You don't want to miss any of that if you'd like to be part of a group, even if it's online and connect on a regular basis with people. There's a way for you to do that. EMIC.org slash groups. EMIC.org slash groups. Be part of the family that way. Meet other people. It's a lot of fun. Rick Renner will be here. You don't want to miss Rick Renner. That's going to be Sunday. September the 17th at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Central. He's going to be excited to bring a word specifically for you. Anytime Rick Renner speaks, the word that he gives is, is just alive, and you don't want to miss it. EMIC.org slash events. If you're coming, uh, we encourage you to be part of Rick Renner and him being here. All right. Have you heard of this? I just heard about it, Spencer. This new book out, it's called God, the Covenant and the Contradiction. Uh, it's a really good book. You can order your copy today. Uh, as a matter of fact, let me just little play a little clip for you and I'll be right back. Now in his new and eye-opening book, Kenneth Copeland, along with Greg Stevens, reveals how a holy God will forge a relationship with you through a series of covenants. In God, the Covenant, and the Contradiction, you'll discover how to access God's promises of healing, peace, and provision. Through its pages, you'll explore what God's covenant is, what His covenant does for you, and unlock answers to the questions and challenges you face. Get your own copy today by visiting kcm.org. Easy. Prosperity is easy. Healing is easy. Once you understand covenant, here's some really interesting things just found out this weekend. It's number one new release on Amazon and it's number one on Kindle. Thank you for making it that. Get your copy today and see what everybody's all excited about. God, the covenant and the contradiction. Listen, Brother Copeland, 2023 is winding down and uh, there's still more events that he's doing. He's leaving um, Columbia right now, right? He was in Columbia today, but he's going to be somewhere near you. And if he's near you, I encourage you to go to a meeting. Here it is. In 2023, join Kenneth Copeland at these free KCM events to build your faith and live in victory. October 26th through 28th, make plans to be at the St. Louis Victory Campaign in Sunset Hills, Missouri. November 9 through 11, don't miss the Omaha Victory Campaign in Omaha, Nebraska. December 31, join us for the New Year's Eve service at Eagle Mountain International Church in Newark, Texas. Go to kcm.org slash events for more information. St. Louis, Missouri, Omaha, Nebraska, and then right here at the end of our calendar year. Okay, listen, there's a brand new television program. If you didn't catch the first week, well, you need to go back and watch that one, but then catch up. It's called Inside the Vision with Pastor George. Here we go. The book of Habakkuk tells us to write the vision and make it plain so that those that read it may run with it. Join me on Tuesday night starting at 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central. You won't want to miss it as we go Inside the Vision. I got my first taste of Inside the Vision this last week. It's not just Pastor George talking to you about Brother Copeland's vision. It will literally help you realize your vision. Because when you start talking about vision, whatever you speak on is what you're sowing. And that's what you're going to reap. You have faith for that. And so I encourage you, if you have a vision that God gave you to watch inside the vision, it'll strengthen the vision God gave you. All right. Uh, as we've talked about before, Flashpoint Live is coming your way with the Truth and Freedom Tour. And they are going to be at Council Bluffs, Iowa, Thursday, September the 14th for one day only. There's the lineup. Look at that. Mike Lindell, Dutch Sheets, Gene Bailey, Hank Kuhneman, Jesse Duplantis will be there. And the Constitution coach, Rick Green, will also be there. If you're, if you're near Iowa, get there September the 14th of 2023. And Victory Thon is right around the corner. It seems like it was just here. And here it is again. And that's going to be Victory Thon 2023. Uh, we want you to be part of that. Uh, instead of me talking about Victory Thon, let me play a little clip for you concerning Victory Thon. Here it Wherever is. Wherever you are in your life, Victory is here for you. Tune in live for Victory Thon, September 17th through 21st. Inspire your vision. Worship together. Receive direction. And join others who are making a difference during this one of a kind event just for you.
September the 17th through the 21st, right here on the Victory Channel. Tell somebody about it. It will be an encouragement to you. Listen, Victory News all week. You don't want to miss Victory News. Tomorrow on Victory News, we have scheduled the Republican National Committee Chairwoman, Ronna McDaniel, will be with us. Uh, Congressman Bob Good is going to be on this week. There's going to be a lot you'll want to see on Victory News. The news has been breaking all weekend, and we're going to have the latest updates to you with the news, so don't miss it. It's at uh, noon Eastern and at 5 Eastern. Do the math on where you're at. Lord, we bless our partners. We thank you for them. I call them healed, whole, blessed, and prosperous. Everything they put their hand to this week prospers and is blessed in Jesus' mighty name. I'm Greg Stevens, and I say God loves you, I love you, and Jesus is Lord. See you next week.